What is going on, everybody? Hail the chat. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you. Uh, please hit the like button, share out the link right now. We, we got Keely Chow in the house. What's up, Keely Chow? Good to see you, man. Thank you for coming back week after week. Uh, this is the author interviews. And today I am interviewing Brightest Day, which means my day is bright and happy and shiny. And man, love isn't gay, all right? Just it isn't, all right? I'm just saying. No, I love this guy. He's been a, a great member in this community. Uh, for as long as I can remember, fellowship, whatever you call it. I know some people have problems with certain words. Uh, but <laughs> I love this dude. Um, I, uh, I never really had a chance to work with him too much until he took over for me on Supreme Heretic's channel uh, with Battlestar Galactica um, doing the, uh, the the Pegasus Actual podcast, show that I loved doing for years. Uh, guys, please go check out Supreme Heretic. Um, and I was able to cover every season with the guy. And then at the end, two people came in. One I had on last week, Arwen Avalon. The second was Brightest Day. A person who has uh, fought his way up over a 1,000 subs, applying for monetization. YouTube gets right and monetize this man. And if you guys would, please subscribe and welcome Brightest Day to the panel. What's up, dude? What is going on, sir? It's good to be here. It is good to see you, man. I, you're, you're one of the most chill dudes I have ever met in all of everything that we do. How do you maintain that level of chill? I, I don't get involved. I don't engage. And when I do, I, and I said this on Twitter the other day, like when I engage, like I roll a D6 and that's the number of responses you get out of me before I'm like, nope, out. <laughs> that's I've, it. I, I've been through two hard marriages and two hard divorces. I've realized what my mental, my mental level is at when I need to disengage. So that's, that's kind of how I stay where I'm at. That's awesome. That is beautiful. Yeah. I, uh, um, I don't know. I for a while there, I was all up in it. I was all up in Twitter fights and and all that stuff. And it just it, it gets you attention, but I mean, it, it can really wear you down. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Twitter is rage incarnate sometimes, man. Yes, sir. Absolutely. There's Keely throwing out links. Thank you very much, guys. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Bad bunnies in the house. Is where is everyone? This is the author interviews. This is just a one on one. Uh, where I talk to people in our community who are up and coming creators or creators who have already been established um, every now and again, every season, I pluck one or two, uh, one or two of the bigger guys in, in our indie sphere. But I really enjoy promoting, um, promoting us at the ground level, people who are uh, may not have um, may not have met subscribers from other channels or not have had the chance to mingle around um, some of the bigger channels. I just I like supporting the indie sphere. You know, that's, that's what I started doing. That's what inspired me to do what I'm doing. So the, I just want to continue that. Thank you, Bad Bunny, for being here. What's up, Runner Blaze? Good to see you, dude. When is the next Blade? When is the next Runner, the next, the next, uh, the next incarnation of Runner going to happen, man? When, <laughs> what, what, do you think? what do you think, Zach? Zach, how many Runners have you seen since you've been here? Oh God, uh, let's see, Runner, Runner reviews, Lord Runner, Runner mm -hmm. Blaze, probably another one I'm forgetting. Runner Studios. Runner, Runner Studios. Studios. Okay. Metal Runner. Was metal run that's right yeah. it was metal yeah. Runner. Yeah. i liked metal runner he was pretty cool <laughs> uh god is here well hi god i'm glad that you came oh, wait i'm an atheist never mind <laughs> i'm a pagan so i mean I, I i like many of you thank you so much for being here appreciate you what's <laughs> up tina bojan channel member thank you so much keeping the lights on supporting the channel guys if you could share out links uh and smash the like i greatly appreciate it thank you very much Clean your peen for the guinea pigs. Uh, well, you know, no, the guinea pigs need to clean their peen. We're not even going to get into this. Isn't Tommy live right now? Isn't Tommy live right now, God? <laughs> so, guys, thank you so much. Um, dude, it's the brightest day. Zach, when um, when did you first create a YouTube channel, man? Uh, it was little, oh, well, I'll see, it's what, May? So February, March of last year. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, I, I had my YouTube account just to use YouTube, but I didn't actually start using the channel until uh, it's like spring of last year. And it was right after. So I, I started watching Gary after the, the last Jedi, I think it was the last Jedi leaks came out or the rise of Skywalker leaks when that whole situation was happening. And, uh, you know, I d dove headlong into, into the fellowship and I found out about culture and Midnight's Edge and all those guys. And through culture, I found Drew. And I, through Drew, I found Pegasus actual podcast. And I'm like, holy crap, there are people that, that like the same shit I like. Yeah, right. and, and then it probably took it, I don't know, three or four months after that for me to actually get started and wanting to do my own Battlestar content. Mm -hmm. I just kind of made that, you know, clearly that's that's my whole branding. Um, 
And it's just kind of where I started out, and it's just been a slow, steady evolution from there. Dig it, man. Dig it. So, uh, like, um, let's see. Why, uh, why? Is Battlestar your favorite? Uh, it, it was the It show on TV after I graduated high school and started working. So, you know, it was the water cooler show at work for me and a few guys. So that it just, it was my formative show. I watched that, um, a little bit of Stargate, although just BSG was like, for some reason that was just the show I gravitated to. Mm -hmm. And it's just been in the corner of my brain ever since. That, I mean, what, why is it stuck with you? Is it the story Did the characters, the time in your life? It's, it's the characters, uh, the first couple of seasons and the miniseries. The the ship designs, I'm a huge sucker for a good starship design and good starship combat. And that show just had it in spades. And uh, what I like to say is that show held the bar for space combat for me up until the expanse. Mm -hmm. So like all the all the really good combat scenes in my brain were from that show up until the expanse came out. Mm hmm. Well, the expanse. You mentioned the expanse. What? Uh, tell me about that show. What do you What do you like about that one? Oh, it was it was everything that was great about BSG, mm -hmm. up to the next level with like with much better production value, and the the combat in space for that show is actually more graceful and more realistic than it was in BSG. Really? Yeah. With it, with the the proper use of gravity, the way the ships are designed, their layouts. Uh, you know, just how the physics works and all of it made sense and all of it was very intelligent and the first three seasons like i was hooked like really really solid television um me and my my ex at the time were just we were glued to that show for the first three seasons mm -hmm. dig it dig it. yeah it's definitely a show I, I i've been meaning to check out but i have not you recommend it i take it oh at, at least the first three seasons you could probably skip the amazon stuff but the first three are a nice complete story okay I dig that. All right. Hey, hail to the chat out there. Thank you guys so much for being here. Satan's here. Well, Satan. Satan ain't got <laughs> Good to see you, Satan. Thank you for coming by. <laughs> so, what's up, Tina? That's right. Clean your peen. That's our clean. That is uh, Zach, in case you didn't know, Tina Bojan is our uh, clean your peen head cheerleader. So yeah, good she's, people. Yeah, she's good, good, great people. CJH is with us. What's up, CJH? Channel member, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you. What's up, subhuman? Ain't seen you in a hot minute. How are you, dude? Good to see you, brother. Thank you for stopping by. I see him uh, around the uh, the Aussie streams a lot. Yes, yeah, man, good streams. Man. I love those guys. We all love those guys. Love their content. Um, let's see, what's up, Becky? How you doing, sweetheart? Good to see you. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, Bad Bunny says, um, "Battlestar Galactica, Lauren Green, or the other one?" So it's the, the 2004 one again, just because that's of my era. I have the Blu-rays for '78, and I plan on watching it at some point. I don't know if I'm going to stick with Drew's stream past the 2004 show. But he wants to go cover seventy eight afterwards. So, yeah. E either way, I'm going to watch it. I think. Um, I, so I love the original. I brought was brought up on the original. You know mm -hmm. that's that's and I. It's actually one of the reasons why I enjoy um, Egyptian mythology and uh, what Greek mythology is just from the references they make. You know, or just the the sets in, in the original. Uh, mm -hmm. But the story was not able to live. It wasn't able to be told the way it should have been. You know, it was, they shouldn't, they tried to cram too much. It was only a single season, really. So they tried to cram too much into it. They didn't get enough time, didn't have enough production. Um, but they had to rework the original, uh, the, the, the pilot to match the rest of the show. Um, I love those characters. I love that universe. But yeah, the, two, the 2004 show, that, that was my, that was it, man. I was glued to the TV every week. Loved watching that. When I found out Drew was, then, uh, you know, we just started rapping about it. And then, you know, he, he started doing he was telling me he was doing battles the uh the pegasus actual podcast i just it's like yes i will gladly rewatch that show <laughs> and relive that you know relive it with you even you know even some of the well the, the, the you know there's there, there's a few things in it that uh, that i think they they went down the the wrong path with or they they took in a, in a, in a direction that could have been better but overall i love that show i have yeah. you know as a complete story i think for both iterations of it they just it's a good concept that just ran into a bunch of bad luck at some point during its production. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the story of BSG. Yeah, dig it. You know that first season though, lit. <laughs> that first yeah. season is nothing but fire from thirty three on. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, CJH says uh, for five dollars. Says I honestly thought Moon Knight was good. Doctor Strange not so much. Yeah, look, y'all, don't buck the echo chamber, all right? <laughs> I said I like Doctor Strange. I'm losing subs like crazy. Thank you guys for still being subscribed. 
<laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you so much. What's up, Darius? Good to see you, brother. Another great person in the community. Love Good seeing you back around. Too. Yeah, man, guys, subscribe to Darius Munchausen if you would. Uh, CJH, thank you so very much, dude. I appreciate you. Um, so what is to explain your channel, your content, and what you do? So when I started out, I was doing a variety of different things. I was doing model building, um, some entertainment reviews, gaming streaming, stuff like that, just trying to do figure out something that would work. Uh, I started doing a couple of creative things. I did the the Cylon War Stories videos, I did like three of those, which I took actual veterans war stories and clipped up scenes from BSG and set it to try to tell that story. And that worked pretty well for the three that I got. Um, I didn't get a whole bunch of input, so I couldn't really continue that. Hmm. And then I did, uh, what else did I do? I, I did a couple other small batch creative things that were good ideas that I just couldn't follow through with. Like I just couldn't keep up with it. And then at some point when I ran out of ideas, I I had this PDF of the Battlestar Galactica miniseries novelization. And I'm like, why don't I just try reading this on stream? And that seemed to work. People seemed to enjoy it. And that kind of led me to where I am now, where I'm just doing science fiction audiobooks. Like, it just seems to be that's the content that I can do. I can do well. I can do consistently. And I don't get burned out on, except for, yeah. you know, vocal cords, obviously. Obviously, yeah. So you found that a lot of people like that content of like hearing and hearing a book be read. I, I think it's a it's something that no one else is doing. Mm -hmm. Um, it's gaining a little bit of traction. Like some books are gaining some traction. So I think the algorithm is going to pick that up. And yeah, I don't have to you know work so hard on the social media aspect to promote myself. Right. Um, it gives me a chance to promote some some independent authors like Kai and like SM Warlow, who's doing the book that I'm recording now heritage. Nice. Um, so I'm trying to do a mix of, you know, old, uh, public domain stuff, some indie stuff, and then some, some current mainstream stuff that maybe might get me claimed if someone gets aggressive about it. But right. I meant, I mean, uh, that sounds a lot more relaxing than doing, uh, doing angry videos. Yeah. Doing, doing rage content. <laughs> but, going for it. <laughs> the double-edged sword with that though is that rage content gets clicks and it gets attention and it gets like that's what youtube likes to promote is that that really high energy out there hyperbolic stuff and that's yeah. not what i'm offering so i'm paying the price for it in terms of exposure like i'm my celebrity status isn't going to blow up but i can offer something that no one else is doing so it's yeah no that's you know, good it's, it's a balance that's good to be original you've got to find some way of standing out from everyone else and if you're just doing the same thing as everybody else you're not gonna it's just it's, it's very hard to get noticed as yeah, much YouTube, as i do for me youtube needs you to have a niche and when you cross over with other people they're going to promote the bigger channel all the time like the youtube's algorithm is terrible but mm. it is what it is it is it is my brother tell me what other brother properties what other properties are you really invested in what 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 do you really do you enjoy um so i was i was into marvel up until Endgame, like I was, I was a big, solid fan of the MCU. I loved it up until Endgame, and then I cut out. I cut out since then. I loved original trilogy Star Wars. I had the special editions on VHS, and I wore out my copy of Empire Strikes Back mm -hmm. because <laughs> Empire is my favorite. I, I love, I loved stories where the bad guys get the upper hand. It's why in, or, uh, Infinity War was my favorite MCU film. Mm -hmm. It's like something, something mm -hmm. about the bad guy getting the, the upper hand yes. in the movie is like, yeah, yeah. yeah I like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think the empire has the better starships. So I, like the, this, I have a, a collector fleet star destroyer up over my head here. Mm -hmm. It's just that, that huge intimidating purpose built. Yeah. It just, it, it ticks all the right boxes in my brain. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's good to see. It's good to see those kinds of stories. Um, I enjoy them too. I try and write them in my science fiction. Um, you know where the, the, the bad, some kinds of bad guys win, and depending on how they're written, it's uh, it, it's good if you can write a good story, you know, good characters around it. Then it's a, it's a payoff, I think, if the good guys lose, or at least have a setback. Mm -hmm. One of the, one of the there was a very good article I read not that long, well, actually, it was a long time ago, where it breaks down just how really, really, really bad all of the moves that the the rebellion makes throughout the series of Star Wars is militarily. It's like you guys make so many tactical and strategic errors. It's a wonder you survived to the end of the series. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Um, what uh, tell us? Tell us about young Zach. Tell me, tell me, what did you like growing up? What uh, what influenced you? Um, let's see. So define young. Um, I'm going to say prior to graduating high school. Mm -hmm. um, 
I got really into pre 2000s anime. So it was when Sci Fi Channel and Cartoon Network and all those channels started airing the early yeah. imported stuff, um, like the really adult, hyper violent stuff. Like um, you had Robotech, you had Macro, or well, not Macro, um, the early Gundams, Akira, Fairfinder D, all the, mm-hmm. the stuff that I probably shouldn't have watched at that age. <laughs> right. But it's like, yeah, this is this is gritty and violent, and it was new, like it was really new. Like it wasn't Sailor Moon and, and Dragon Ball Z, even though I watched those too. Like this was just something else entirely, and it spoke to that visceral part of my brain. Mm-hmm. And then when Robotech came out, when uh, when Cartoon Network did Robotech, I was like, I don't know what this this is like Transformers on, like a whole other level, and like the. Apparently, military science fiction is something I really love because that's exactly what that is. Um, but it has, you know, the transforming mecha. I love giant robots. It's mm-hmm. got space combat. It's got uh, love triangles and important character deaths and very good arcs. And it's got uh, what's known as the Itano Circus, which is basically like a cloud of missiles that fly in every direction. And it's, <laughs> it's this very like, for really? my ADHD brain, was like yes. <laughs> Explosions everywhere. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, what's uh? Well, how did that change? Uh, you said before high school. So, well, what what? Uh, how did your taste change as you as you went through your twenties? Well, I, I started working for one thing. <laughs> you can't watch TV all day. It kind of changes. Um, <laughs> I, again, BS, BSG came out. I was watching uh, BSG, DS Nine, and Voyager. Mm-hmm. So I I acquired a taste for live action military sci fi. Mm-hmm. Um, started, started reading more. Um, so I had read, you know, Lord of the Rings. Um, God, I'm trying to remember what else I read in that time. I just started reading more books like to myself. Right. Um, when I started working, I started listening to audiobooks. So I, I plowed through the entire Dune, you know, catalog at work on audiobook. I plowed through the Dresden files. Which is another. It's not sci-fi, but I love the Dresden Files. I've read. I've read one of those. I thought it was a good book. Um, my friend actually just bought. She got. She found a whole stack of them at Goodwill. I'm like, just pick those nice. up. I'll shit you forty bucks. <laughs> like I love that. <laughs> like I just started picking up different, um, you know, different well-written franchises and um, video games. There's so many good independent video game franchises out there. Like uh, Fallout. I love mm-hmm. Fallout. So like the Fallout Three, New Vegas Four. I went back and played two and a couple of the other ones. Um, I like that world. It's just, it's just you like your post-apocalyptic. Yeah, and I uh, uh, get where your Pacific Rim came out, but Pacific Rim is one of my favorite movies, even though people shit on that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's giant robots duking it out like that's <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Dig that. Dig that. Uh, do you? Uh, so you. Your, what kind of books are you reading right now? The, the, the content that you're putting out on your... Uh, it's... Your... Um, well, it's, it's science fiction. Um, it's it's a lot of the same stuff. Uh, between between Kai's book, Space Crime Domino, um, again, Heritage, which is the one I'm reading now, it's... You get that, uh, that Firefly-like formula where you have this ragtag crew on a, a small but capable ship and they go off and do all sorts of crazy adventures. That's a really mm-hmm. solid formula for good sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Bad Bunny mentions Halo. I played a little. I'm not. I wasn't like a super Halo nerd, but I played all the games up until Reach. Um, I'm not actually going to start reading some of those books too. Hopefully, in the future. Um, yeah, that's another are, great universe. Some of those books are good, man. Yeah, I was. I love the Halo series. <clears throat> played it with my kid. Taught him how to use a controller. With you know, it's one of the games. Halo One. Or no, it's Halo Two. Yeah, man. Uh, is uh, so. Let's see. Uh, Bad Bunny says, uh, if you like the expanse, you probably like Halo. Just mentioned that. Yep. Thank you yeah. very much for being here. Um, uh, Jack of all casuals, channel member says, uh, hey Zach, can I get a transformer? Yeah, it's an inside <laughs> joke. There was a there was an article months ago where someone was like, uh, oh, look at these wacky transformers, and it's a Gundam. And like mm-hmm. I built I built the Gundams. So he's right. like, that's that's just a joke we've had between us for a while. <laughs> got, got to meet Jack out in Vegas. We uh, we did a little bit of bowling just randomly because we couldn't find anything else to do nice. that's a lie i actually pushed i was trying to get people to go bowling and easily one that did i'm like okay right. nice. i did like i did um a little i bowled for like a year year and a half i did one mm-hmm. league and then COVID hit so i was like okay i guess that's the end of that oh man you, know, you never had a chance to go back to it or just 
uh, I I do once in a while, but I never like you know it it was a hard stop. Like we couldn't do competition. You couldn't go with the times I was normally going. So it's like I just I have this weird string of having a hobby for like a year, year and a half at a time in my life, and then something happening, and I put it down and go to something else. Gotcha. That's kind of like the story of my life. <laughs> gotcha. Tina Bojan says BSG and Stargate were the gateway nerd shows for my husband and I uh, share with the boys. Incredible. That's incredible. Uh, is were you ever? Um, uh, have you ever? seen a franchise get so bad that it was something that you you didn't you felt as though you wanted to share with your friends family other people and then you never really had the chance because you know because it just it, 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 it was just a disappointment a show was just a, had such a disappointing end mm. um i mean technically bsg the the you know the last two seasons are really controversial but i I can't say that I would that I wouldn't have shared with people. I've definitely ducked out of shows um, mm -hmm. like the the Arrowverse on CW. I watched the first few oh. seasons of Arrow and The Flash, and I was really into those. I watched the first season of Legends of Tomorrow, and I thought it was great. Yeah. And after a point, all those shows just dove off a cliff, and I'm like, okay, I'm out. That's this is dumb. I am glad you mentioned that. That's the exact same track that I took. <laughs> that exact. I love the Arrowverse first couple seasons of Flash, uh, Legends of Tomorrow. I was kind of excited to see those characters come together, and then. Pfft, it just, yeah, it, it uh, you know, it's disappointing because uh, the the Arrowverse I thought was something that could have translated on screen. Some of those actors could have been brought in. I want to see Steve Amell. Yeah, Steve Amell was great. Um, yeah, the kid that plays the, uh, Grant Gustin is a really good Flash. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it's one of these things where I think if they were given consistently good scripts, they could continue to go. I mean, I think, I think Steve and Amell just got tired of doing that show. Um, yeah, Manu Bennett was a fantastic Deathstroke. Was he awesome? Dude? Was he, dude? Yes, he was. Uh, I was I'm a fan of the Spartacus show. I liked when he played Crisis. Yeah. He, he, he was even good in um, what's the, the other the fantasy show that he did? He was the Druid. I can't remember the name of. I don't, I'm not even sure. Hold on, I mean, but there was another show that he was on. It was a, not not a great show. Um, I'll check it out though. If he was in there. He played a Druid. Yeah, he played a Druid. It's hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's it's gonna kill me until I remember it. Um, see, I think Druid. I think like you know, Shannara Chronicles. What was it? They, they did a Shannara Chronicles show, and that was not great. But he was good in it. Huh. Um, All right. Well, I'll check it out and see how bad it is. The kid, actually, <laughs> the, the 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 lead from that is slated to. If uh, Nerd Cookies rumors are correct, he's slated to play um, in the next Dune movie. Oh, dude. What did you think of Dune? What did you think of that film? I, I, I loved Dune. Like, oh, I dude. was, I watched that movie twice in the course of eight hours from Damn. like, a, from like a, I got out of an IMAX showing at 1 a.m., went home, slept, woke up, downloaded it, watched it again, and then went on Elaine's stream to go talk about it. That's how much I loved that movie. Nice, nice. nice and I don't nice. care how much nobody else likes it. I, I was in love with that. I, I will, when, when part two comes out, I will buy that whatever format it's on mm -hmm. at the time and just like that'll be in my collection yeah i thought it was good too i, I, I it was it was a little it didn't keep my attention at, at points here and there but uh i don't it, it's not i don't think it's meant to be fast action all the time it's no, just, it, it's it had to tell you a grand story i wasn't um my i give it like an eight out of ten mm -hmm. and i think the score is where i kind of ducked out of it because it doesn't fit the the scene in some parts mm -hmm. and it's very atmospheric yeah but I was a I was a big fan of everything else. Like I thought the performances and the casting were great. I loved yeah. the mechanical design of all of the ships and the ornithopter. I'm like, yep, that's Dude. exactly what I wanted to see. Dude, that's excellent. Yeah, I thought that was excellent. Um, beautiful, man. Uh, let's see. Anybody else have any questions for Zach? Oh, Rough Girl's out there. What's up, Rough Girl? Good to see you. Hail to you. There's an Emperor Pelosi in the chat. Hail, I think. Uh, let's see. Uh, do 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 do. Anybody else? Rugo's here with us. What's up, Rugo? Thank you guys so much for being here. Appreciate you. Please hit that like button. Share out the link. What's up, Phil? How you doing, man? Feels good, good dude. He is very good, dude. Good, man. Glad to see you here. Thank you so much for being here. So, is there any uh, any content right now, right that's coming out right now that you're looking forward to? Ooh, um. So I just went and saw The Northman, which was fantastic. Like mm -hmm. easily the best movie I've seen. I think it was better than No Way Home. A diff different movie, but I think it was better. 
I am actually looking forward to Top Gun 2. Like, I, I'm not a huge fan of Tom Cruise as a person, but mm-hmm. I think what I've seen of that movie really makes me want to see it. Um, I don't know what else is coming out, honestly, to give you an opinion on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's... I, there's there's not there's not much there's not much on the plate. I'm waiting for uh, Cobra Kai, I'm waiting for the next Cobra Kai. <laughs> I want to see that. Uh, um, is there uh, so any any other TV shows? Any anything at all that you enjoy? No. Uh, Are you I, like me? Do you go back and watch reruns all the time? Because that's what I do. I go back and watch old series. I watch DS9. Yeah, I mean that's kind of what I'm doing now. Like uh, my friend and I just started watching Trigon again, which is a you know a late nineties anime. Um, I want to go back and rewatch Justified because Justified was one of my favorite shows on TV ever. Hmm. Um, I love Timothy. Ol- uh, that was on FX. Uh, Timothy Oliphant stars as a federal marshal who returns back to his hometown in, I think it's Kentucky. And like, there's this organized crime unit there that's includes like one of his childhood friends and just all sorts of shenanigans. And so great show, fantastic show. Like I absolutely guarantee, like I, uh, okay. you know, um, not guarantee. I uh, support like, people watching that. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Steven Salcedo's here. Um, thank you very much for being here, brother. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's right, Jackson. Orville season three. I am actually looking forward to that too. I love oh, Orville. Yes, can't wait for PJ's uh, content to come out for that. Orville Nation. Yeah, Orville is um, one of those weird things. Like that's. I can't think of too many other shows that are basically a straight up parody of an established IP that is actually super quality. And that cool. show just like is took off on its own, but it's really good. Super quality and a continuation of something that people wanted to see. And I think know? they got a bigger budget for season three too. So it might actually be better. Like it'd be better in season one and two. I mean, I'd hope so. Uh, as long as the writing stay, stays consistent, yeah. you know, I, I need more boredom in my life. Like yeah. that's just, that's, what I, I like to see. I can't <laughs> I can't stop thinking how relevant that one episode where they go to that planet where it's like it's social media driven, like mm-hmm. their justice system and social like that's such a relevant episode. Yes. Like and it just gets more relevant as days go by. I mean it's very eye opening. We're we're living in that uh well the, the you know the whole currency idea over you know from China, the whole social currency idea, that's that's kind of enacted everywhere. I mean it, it all it takes is a little bit of rage. Um and a lot of people to get manic about something and you can change in a you know, public opinion about damn near anyone or anything at these days. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Um, to, oh, yep. Zach says justified is great. He said uh, Tony Hoffman playing himself. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> funny. So he um, he went from that show to a Netflix show, The Santa Clarita Diet, which is like a completely different. Show. And he plays such a different character on that show. It's almost jarring. But that's, I mean, that show is pretty good too. I don't want to plug Netflix because, you know, screw Netflix, but that show was kind of entertaining for what it was. And uh, Drew Barrymore and uh, Timothy Oliphant and uh, Nathan Fillion plays a small part in it. It was, it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. What, uh, any, any opinions on any of the, uh, any of the Disney controversy that just, uh, that just took place? Chuck Disney. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Chuck Disney. I, I'm, I'm enjoying watching them shoot themselves in the foot. I'm not giving them any money. That's, I mean, that's my stance on it. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, it's weird. So, with how political entertainment is now, and me being kind of an Alex Jonesy kind of person with all of these things, like I think the, all of these things are connected to something shadowy off in the distance. I try not to give my opinion too much because that's immediately where my brain goes is like that, that Alex Jonesy part. But okay, you know, I just tell people all the time like, the entertainment industry is the propaganda arm of the government now. And as soon as you look at it through that lens, a whole bunch of stuff makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Really. Yes, yes, sir. Um, CJH says uh, they're going after Disney's copyright. They may lose the rights to Mickey Mouse. What? That would be horrible. What? <laughs> I mean, um, <laughs> mm, I don't know. CJ, what are you talking about? I got to read it. I got to read up on that. <laughs> I says, uh, CJH also says, uh, I'm going to watch the new Nick Cage yeah, movie. I, I heard that was good. I actually should probably watch that too. Honestly, I forgot. I it got buried under the Northman, but um, I did. I was interested in that. I didn't even know he had another film out. It's called the unbear the the unbearable weight of massive talent. So it's it's like him in a meta role going through all of his other roles. Oh no way! Okay, yeah. done. It's, <laughs> you, remember, you remember when uh, JCVD came out a few years back with Jean Claude Van Damme? <clears throat> it's like Nick Cage's version of that. 
Okay. All right. We'll do that. That sounds good. Monkey Jeebus is here. What's up, Monkey Jeebus? Good to see you. Hail you. Uh, Zach, I'm a... Wow. Wow. Jack about casuals. Uh, <laughs> I don't know he's, what he's trying to say there, Zach. What's, what's he's going Alex, on? He's Alex Jonesing it. Oh, oh, oh. My bad. I'll eat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll stir you up. I'll eat your ass. <laughs> What uh, what things are you passionate about in life, Zach? What the- um, making people smile? Honestly, I like making people laugh. I love giving people gifts. Like I like doing things for people without without the expectation of reward. Even though getting a reward is nice, that's just kind of how I was raised. It's also why I was taken advantage of in both of my relationships. But mm. I just like I like to be giving. I like to support people, which is why like most of my early content all my social media stuff is just me like promoting other people instead of myself like i like to see other people succeed me like like i know that i get a lot of credit from people in the fellowship even though my channel is not gonna like i I don't expect to succeed but it's like i like saying hey like hey i helped that guy out hey i interviewed that guy when he was small hey i you know push this guy's stream hey i link these two people together and they have something awesome going on now like that those little things um keep me going most times Yeah, I understand that. I was I had the, the very same I had the very the very same passion. It's kind of why I do this show. Um and uh the trick the trick for some of us is never getting jealous of your brother's success. When you come up with people, when you promote people when you're helping others out, you see him grow, you see him climb, you see him just you know grinding. Mm-hmm. Be happy for your brother's success, guys. Be happy it's for it. It's hard to do though. I and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I you know that that jealousy and that like I wish I was that successful even with helping them still peeks through, but I'm still happy for people. You know, mm. it's, it's, it's natural, but it, it is what it is. Mm. And the, uh, yeah, Zach's you're, you're welcome again for that. <laughs> I did a few giveaways back in February and one of them was the, the real cowboy bebop Blu-ray set. Oh. I, gave away, I gave away three of those. Cool. Cool. Good for you, Zach. Hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you guys so much for being here. Please smash the like. Share out the link. <laughs> Greatly appreciate you, man. So, what uh, do you have any plans in, in the future for your channel? Like, do you do, do you have a direction? Do you another? Are you just going to stick to reading science fiction audio books? Yeah, uh, my, my direction now is to do exactly what I'm doing, and, and that is pick entertaining books and be do the performative readings and it. It's wholly dependent on whether or not YouTube approves my monetization reapplication. If mm-hmm. they don't, I don't know if I'm going to be on YouTube. I'm not going to really give them the time of day. I might okay. go to Twitch and do gaming, or I might do something else. Again, okay. like like I said before, like I have this thing in my life where my hobbies only last, you know, year, year and a half, and then something happens and I go on to something else. So I'm hoping that's not the case, but I wouldn't be surprised if it is. Yeah, there's usually a little roadblock or something that stops you from from being able to continue on with a hobby when you get into it. Yeah, usually. I mean, it, whether it's something that happens or if it's just me hitting my life attention span on something, which happens a lot too. I have like a a life commitment <laughs> issue, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's really sad to say, but this just kind of seems to be how it works out. You know, I mm-hmm. I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a year. I did bowling for a year. I did the gym for a year and youtube for a year and a half or so it's like it just seems to be how things are going he's like, at the not... end of his youtube life guys go to twitch find him on twitch he'll be gaming <laughs> gaming fallout <laughs> i'm probably sure that i'm probably a good one dude i don't i've thought plenty of times about going over to uh to just doing gaming content i see a lot of youtubers just do that now uh well they don't just do that but they've they've moved up there they've moved over there or just over there a bunch of other people just gaming the ass off i would love to have the time to do that if I wasn't writing, I would love to have the time to do that and just play games and, and straight. But you know what? I would feel like you got to have a camera on you at some point. I would make a mistake, pick my nose or something. You know, like I'm not. Mm-mm. So that's the other thing, too, is that <laughs> between reading the books and doing the audiobooks thing and my friend who does her own fair share of writing, I might try writing something. I might write a short story or a novel or something. Give that a shot. You should. I mean, I, I've had my fair share of ideas over the last few years, but I, I haven't. I used to write poetry and short stories when I was in high school, you know, as an angsty teen. But I was decent enough at it. I, I could give it a shot. I think you'd do well. Zach, you'd do well at that. 
You should give it a shot, man. I'll probably do well at a lot of things if I could stick with them. Well, I mean, write one book. Yeah. <laughs> write one book. You were there. You did that. Macklin made it here, and he made it. Hail and howdy. Hey. Speaking of which, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Timothy says, uh, you love to see when good people succeed. Uh, Walton and Brightest Day um, are people I love seeing succeed, both good men. Thank you so much, Phil. Appreciate you, dude. A shining light in the indie sphere. First, love ever love seeing everything you post, man. Keep keep it up, keep going. And uh, we need positivity. We need positive people pushing this thing along. You can also find Brightest Day's Twitch has a Twitch, and there it is. <laughs> that'll be where I that'll be where I go if YouTube gives me the boot. So that's messed up. Well, I'm praying for you, dude. I want I don't want to see that. I do not want to see that because you're one of the people that's come up and have meant a lot to others in this indie sphere, obviously, from mm -hmm. people that have uh that are showing up in the chat. And your name always pops up when they're on the list of good people. Your name always pops up for me when I'm talking to my trusted friends. So uh, let me ask you a very serious question now. Has Culture Casino gone too far with the beard? No. No, no really? I mean, he think? seems to think he has, but he wears it's, the beard well. It's but it's it's really mangled. It's big now. It's really big though. It's I mean, I mean, if he's not gonna get product and take care of it, then yeah, he should get rid of it. But he doesn't look bad with a beard. That's coming from a, like I can I can only go the chin strap and the goatee. My cheeks don't come in very full, so I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> you know? Dude, I've got a yeah, I've got a hole. It doesn't grow in right over here, so I know what you mean. It makes me insane. <laughs> no, Ultron's a good dude. I'm glad I got to meet him in Vegas. Um, another fantastic guy. Yeah, that's what everybody tells me. He he, he hasn't met me yet. The bastard. <laughs> working together for two years <laughs> now i love culture i love a lot of the people in the industry what who are some of the best who are some of the, the the who are some of the most important friendships or most uh uh life have you made any life-changing friendships with people that you've met since you've come on here uh yes probably too many to name oh okay um, beautiful at, at drew obviously you know supreme heretic uh just between the show and our love of bsg and bonding over him you know the last in mom's last days just trying to be there for him as a friend um iron caster a uh, guy started doing a gundam review show with in my early days um bruce lombardo guys supported yes. me a lot in the beginning culture bruce. you know there, there's I, I could probably name a thousand names and not name everybody there's mm -hmm. just the 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 circle that we got is so full of good people. I mean, we fight and we all have different tastes and we can angry at each other, but at the heart, we're all salt of the earth people. Yes. Yes. Well said, brightest. Well said, man. Um, do, uh, what's, uh, what, what do you hold streams? Do you hold live streams? Do you have any regular shows that you do? Um, I used to, uh, I, I may start doing a monthly again. If, if the channel continues, I may do a monthly stream where I talk about a book that I've finished or a topic relative to one of the books that I've read, you know, an author interview. Like I want to interview SM Warlow when I'm done recording his book. Um, so there will be streams. It's just not, not the same kind of streams I was doing when I started. Um, but yeah, they'll, they'll be there if this, if the channel continues. Gotcha. Do you guest on other people's shows? Do you, uh, do you throughout the week? Not, I mean, occasionally. So, when the new year hit my my dog passed um i had to put him down and that mm -hmm. honestly it crushed me so hard i took a, a huge step back from being on camera i was just so emotionally broken i went into such a deep depression it it's just now that the winter's over and it's starting to get nice that you know the the sun is giving me my the vitamin d i need to get out of my depression and actually start being a person again so i'm mm -hmm. kind of now just dipping my toe back into being on streams with people i did Brandon, the anime guy, stream on Saturday. I'm I'm here with you today. I did Drew, um, did Drew's stream or uh, I you can say you do Drew. Thursday. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I, I did, we did Pegasus actual Thursday, so I'm I'm slowly getting back into it. I know I've I, I've ditched out on a few people in the past. Uh, Speaker for the dead, and I apologize, Brian, if you're listening, if you see this. Um, you know, I was just it took me so long to get out of that 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 negative headspace that I was in. Brian's good people. He'd understand. Yeah, I just, yeah. I've always dealt with depression. Um, it's it's been better in in later years. I did some, I did magic mushrooms honestly, and that actually rewired my brain. So I'm not as bad as I used to be. Mm -hmm. But between depression and ADHD, I suffered a lot, but with my productivity and just being a person for a long time. 
and mm-hmm. it, you know depression still hits like it, it never goes away yeah. and sometimes it's just it takes me out of whatever it is i'm doing how do you how do you uh, bring yourself out of depression fits time most if it's bad the only thing that works is time you gotta mm-hmm. let the darkness pass you know um you'd be around people that are positive i stick with my pets my pets don't care they just come and shower me with love all the time anyway so that's always a good thing um just just telling yourself it's going to pass letting you know just telling yourself like look you know this is temporary the darkness is going to go just just stick with it mm-hmm. and it's it's ironic for a guy with the screen of a brightest day to talk about his darkness but you know that, that's 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 real talk man hey brother yep Hail brother, why is your name Brightest Day? You haven't mentioned um, you haven't mentioned Green Lantern. Doesn't that come from Green Lantern? It it does. Um, I'm not a I'm not a comics aficionado. Like I don't have a, a wealth of comics knowledge like guys like Clobber and yeah. Times do. But the Green Lantern is like the one character that I always loved the ethos of. I loved the core design and aspect of the character. You know the willpower, the acting in the face of your fear, the capability he has. Um, Hal Jordan, you know, Jordan being my namesake, just being that that stoic, strict code of justice guy, you know, bullheaded, you know, as an Aries that kind of you know sticks with me. It's, mm-hmm. It was the one character I gravitated towards, and it's just been a thing. So when I first loaded my Steam account, you know, I put up a Steam account, I'm like I need a I need a screen name, so I picked Brightest Day, and I've just stuck with it ever since. Nice, <laughs> nice dude, nice. Yeah. Um... Very cool. What, uh, what, uh, what, what things, what hobbies have you not gotten into in this life that you want to get into for a short term? I really wanted to race cars. Really? I, wa- I wanted to have a fast car and drive it on a track. And I tried. I have a car in my garage that is probably going to rot out before I get anything into it. But that was something I wanted to do really bad was drive a fast car. I just never got to do it. Hmm. Son of a bitch. Anything, any other, anything else you ever wanted to do you weren't able to? Um, I wish or I had you stuck still with, have time to. I wish I had stuck with jujitsu a little bit more. That was fun, mm-hmm. even though like, I was getting my ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I did painting for a little while. I, I did a few paintings, um, just acrylic stuff, nothing special. I was not, I'm not super talented, but I did a few things. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I want to write. I'll probably write something. That's something technically I haven't done. Um, yeah, there's there's probably a bunch of stuff. Yeah, uh, I'd like to do a, like a super intricate cosplay at some point in my life. Probably mm-hmm. something mechanical. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of tick boxes left before you know, before I get old or before the Western society falls. You know. Yeah, this is a po- very positive outlook. Brightest day. It's very positive. <laughs> hey man, gotta, gotta be real. Before we got on, he was like, you know, I'm stocking ammo and food. <laughs> I was like, All right, it's gonna be a fun combo. Y'all should be too. Y'all should be. <laughs> Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, let's see. Zach says, uh, Zach, is there a way you can help with the YouTube monetization situation? You've helped so many people. Let us help you. I don't, I don't, at this point, I don't think so. I think it's out of anybody's hands, but YouTube's and they're just, you know, the rules are so vague yet enforceable. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to think I've made the adjustments necessary in my channel to get past whatever their problem was. I, I reapplied five days ago. And they, they're giving themselves a month to get back to me. So I may not find out until next month. Oh, my God. But uh, CJH said he moved all his content to Odyssey. That's another platform. I actually mirror my stuff over there. Yeah, same. Um, I don't get any traction on there, but it is all mirrored there. So at least it's in like an archive. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, not sure why I still don't have a wrench. Are you going to make me give you a wrench <laughs> right now? All right, CJ, you gotta give me a minute. All right, let me get through this. Yeah. Uh, Rough Girl says positivity pays. Absolutely, it does. Absolutely. You would like attracts like, and, uh, when you're like, I understand what I, I, I fight depression too. So I understand what, what Zach's saying when he's like, it's isolate way for the darkness to pass. Cause at that point you're not attracting anything good and you've got to filter all that negativity out. Uh, but when you can, man, you just stay positive, vibrate high and like does attract, like really does rough girl. Good to see you, sweetheart. Thanks for being here. Um, Jack, I see Jack's saying he's going to donate the beard. Okay. Stuck in the culture. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because he, which was cool. Like I thought that was awesome. Oh, yeah. When he did that video showing, like that was, that cemented culture as like one of the best of us in my book. That's why I pushed to get him on FNT. Like he needs to be 
on that show at least once. Sorry. I am trying to get the wrench for CJ because he's complaining <laughs> about it. I, I think it's going to be it either. It's either going to be not that I want to you know plug FNT or anything, but plug them. There's going to be, I think, one of three guys that are going to be on that show within the next six months, we'll say. And it's going to be either Culture, it's going to be 32 Flavors of Nick Weiser, or it's going to be Maxfield Von Priestley. And I got to meet all of them in Vegas. They're all super, like, they're exactly the people that they are on camera. They're all super great people. And I think that getting one of them on that show would be, like, a rocket for their career. Not that I think any of those guys need help. No. Like, Nick Nick just passed a 1,000. You know, God bless him. He's, he's going to do his celebration stream here pretty soon I think it's in yeah. a couple of days nick um, is great yeah he's exactly the guy you think he is mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah, that's why i brought him in that's why he's a rogue man he's he's you know real people like real good positive people uh let's see so what do you say culture is going to join duck, new duck dynasty spinoff he could he could um i don't know if he'd be as funny he'd be the dry comic culture <laughs> would be the dry unless he's drinking i love drunk culture at the middle of the night love that guy. I, I was so ticked i didn't get to buy him a drink at vegas like he was checking out when i went to go buy him a drink he's like do you really want to buy me a three dollar soda i'm like yes but i understand why you don't want me to do that <laughs> like, I, just, I just want to be generous to people i was i was buying like everybody drinks and doing i'm like, trying to do things for people just to try to make that positive impression on people mm -hmm. That's good, man. No, that's that's beautiful. Like, you know what? You do make a positive impression on people. You don't even need to do that. You just hang out. And culture's rich. I didn't pay for everything. Jack of all <laughs> casuals. <laughs> Jack of all casuals. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> the Vegas and Orlando meetup this year. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Orlando. That's right down the street from me. Uh, can't wait to get that. Z Zach says Zach is. Oh nope, they already talked. You already, already did that. One. Sorry about that. Brightest day. Push back his own show to be a guest on my show first. He's a stand-up guy and a great supporter. Hail Darius. Thank you so much for being here, dude. Appreciate you. Uh, the pain will always be there, but we will grow. And there is no light without darkness. Definitely, my brother. Absolutely. Um, awesome one says uh, I wanted to create a, a book or comic when I was younger. I did the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to make a bunch of comics, but uh, it, it, be, it became a novel. Yeah, I've got a couple of things that would be better off as comic book, like short, one-off comic books. Mm -hmm. But a lot of comic creators around us, man, you can make money off that. Yeah. A lot of them. I, I, I would have to pay someone to make it. <laughs> Find yourself a nice, young and hungry, young and hungry artist who just wants a writer <laughs> on the team. You, you'll find it. Uh, let's see. FNT with crop culture. No, culture uh, would corrupt them. No, he would hold his own. He's 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 got <laughs> everything he needs to be on that show. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, man. And any uh, let's see. No, we already covered that. So, is anything you're looking forward to in entertainment? So you're like, nah, I don't care. Oh, Nick Cage. Oh, yeah, Nick, Nick Cage and Top Gun Two <laughs> until something else Top Gun rears two. rears its head that looks really good. You think uh, Top Gun Two is gonna be good, man? I hope it will. Yeah. I mean. Do you think they're going to uh, I don't, play volleyball I don't, shirtless in the movie? If well, yes, <laughs> yes, but I don't think it's going to be as I don't think Mad Bardigan's going to be very excited. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some of that I, '80s homoeroticism, you know. You could at least get some co-ed volleyball in there, you know. <laughs> right, right. Because I mean, you're going to have the uh, you know your token representation female pilot. You might as well get her in there. You know? I don't okay. care if it's in a sports bra. What if she's jacked? You know, what if she's more manly than the guys. I mean, it depends on how it looks. There's some muscle girls that are all right. I hear you. I hear you. Etep likes some, that too. Not many, but some. <laughs> Etep's enjoy those, enjoys those too. Oh my god! Shout out to Etep. I love Etep. Yeah, me too, man. Um, what? Uh, so let's see. Uh, any plans for the near future? Any plans at all? Or are you just gonna you're, you're kind of waiting to see what happens with uh, YouTube before you move into something, or possibly move into something else? It's it's that yeah I'm waiting on YouTube to shit or get off the pot regarding my monetization, mm -hmm. um, I think I because I was waffling on this a bit I I won't delete my channel, I'll leave it up just to have the content up there, um, but I won't I won't add to it, right because I, I just don't want to give them the time of day if I'm not gonna it 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 got to the point where I was on a couple of streams that I didn't have a lot of fun on, and making the content is starting to feel like work, so if it's gonna feel like work. I want to get paid for it mm. and it's not all about the money i understand it's not going to be a lot of money if anything but it's a principal thing mm. like you know i have a day job 
my day job prevents me from being on a lot of streams. You know, needing to go to bed at a reasonable hour means I can't do a lot of late night stuff. Yeah. So I'm kind of in this weird, responsible adult position. You know. Damn it! <laughs> don't damn it! Don't adult, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, hey man, man I'm pushing. I'm, I'm pushing forty. I can't help but adult. <laughs> forty-five, bro. I just turned forty-five. I, I, yeah, I, just, I, need I to, just turned thirty-seven, so I'm I need back to out out my thirties. Well, God bless you. All right, you still got a few more red flags to run into, Zach. I've, I've run out. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so I'm, much for being here. I'm not going for strike three. I'm not getting married again. Like it, and if it is, it's going to be you know a damn miracle. Um. Oh yeah. Now, would you simp for a, a rich actress? Like, would you would you be that for? You know. Well, I did just list my top five favorite actresses on Twitter. Today. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but I don't think Salma Hayek or Monica Bellucci or Carla Cugino or Alexandra Daddario or Anna de Armas are going to be knocking down my door anytime mm. soon. Mm. You want to like some of the names on that list, sir? Man. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, do do us all, do me a favor if you will go out. On your social, go out on Twitter, share a link out, and ask YouTube why his channel is not monetized yet. Let's 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 get behind this guy, man. We want to see him around. He's a good person in our community. He's helped a lot of us. Uh, does all that he can for us. So let's 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 pay that back and push it forward. Let's make some noise. Let's make some noise for brightest day if we can. Um, any any comments? Anything you want to say to any up and coming creators or anyone out there in our fellowship? Any yes. message you'd like to impart to them? If you're going to do YouTube seriously, one, find a different platform because YouTube sucks, but find your niche. Find your niche that you can do consistently because YouTube, even though its algorithm is complicated and you know hostile, um, it's very stupid. It needs to know exactly what you are so it can put you in exactly that bucket. Like it's very specific. So you got to you got to figure out what you're doing and, and stick with it and then just be yourself. And make quality videos. Quality videos is really the key. Like your videos have got to be top notch. So don't stop, don't watch me watch science fiction audiobooks <laughs> with brightest. Or stuff. even even guys like MVP. You know, Max's Max's videos are crisp and professional looking, and that is really the key. You, I've heard a lot of guys when I started off say, you know, you got to be consistent. You got to stream at the same time every day. You got to release at the same time every day. And yeah, that helps. But um, a lot of the, because there's a lot of channels out there that'll tell you how to make your, your channel grow and be, the key is like, give them a few quality videos that are in a specific niche that YouTube knows how to promote. And that's how you get started. And then stick with it. There you go. You couldn't get better advice right there, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zach. Thanks for being here. Thanks for taking the time to come and be interviewed, man. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Hail to everybody in the chat. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Please do me a favor. Uh, your favorite two or three YouTubers out there, send out links. Put out Zach's link and ask YouTube why this man ain't monetized yet. If you would, let's get a, give a show of support out there. And um, please make sure to support your independent creators, your novelists, uh, your comic book artists, uh, whatever it is, whoever it is, no matter what lunch table they have, no matter what, uh, wh who they are. If you like their content, please share it out. We as independent creators, that's how we grow. We thank you guys so much for being here. Be good to each other and suffer no fools. Peace. Take care of yourselves and each other. Who had told uh, us at a town hall, I think it was in July, that the